because with this you can just keep on building. Could move it over here, and I can just sculpt something here. See? So this is also a, a great and very smooth way to build up volume. By default, it only adds when you move. So I'm not moving now; it doesn't add. It only adds when I move. So if I keep doing this, you will see that I built up a bit of a wall shark fin. You can change this in the voxel menu at the top there's an option, I'll just tear it off there's an option called uh, grow on pen motion if you uncheck that it will just keep on growing without you having to do anything for it if it's turned off it won't do anything until you start moving as far as I know, uh, this only really works for the build brush. So, in my opinion, it should be an option when you choose the build brush. But for now, it's in the Voxel option menu at the top. The next brush is the extrude brush. This is the bread and butter brush of 3D code, if you ask me. Uh, it's very predictable, it's relatively smooth, you can use all the pen options, so you can, it, it works with all the different alphas, uh, sharp one, this one, yeah, you can use it. Uh, there's something like this. All the pen options, uh, like I don't know. Let's turn on radius variation to something like 20%. Choose a default alpha. That's a, not very much. There we go. Radius variation. Uh, you can turn on Jitter if you want to. Just a very nice brush and uh, it works very predictable. It, it works always. Uh, unlike Carve, this is a brush that just always works no matter what you do with it. Oh, let's turn it off. See? It's a great brush. The sphere brush is very, very interesting. Um, it also has a few different options. First of all, it, it works, it may feel a bit like uh, uh, the layer brush from ZBrush, but it actually works with a sphere as you can see. Uh, I don't think alphas work with this, no. Alphas don't make, uh, make a difference. Uh, but the nice thing about these brushes is that you can use this to generate volume really quickly. It's it's a great way to add a lot of material and then you can just smooth it if you want. But you can also use it to create arms or antenna or anything you want. If you turn this on, draw from first point, it will uh, start drawing from the first point that you, you start on, but it will draw uh, perpendicular to your view. So I'll just show it, because that's easiest. And that is really great. So let's see. Let's turn this on. I think that's nice to start with. So you can do some really great, great things with this. can see maybe some options could be added so you can start small and and big but I think you can see the possibilities of this 
of course this is all voxels so have fun blending it together add more branches at least this is really very cool um, cubic interpolation it should uh, uh, help create smoother forms but I haven't really noticed uh, a difference maybe you will notice a difference something to, to keep in mind and play with perhaps this is too much fun <laughs> okay so much for the sphere brush. The next brush is 2D paint which is also quite nice. Um, it actually has a few similarities with the sphere brush. Uh, biggest difference is that it works with the alphas and uh, you dictate the plane so if you right click on anything it will set the plane to that depth so actually you have two things that you can adjust with this tool you have the depth and the depth is decided by the object that you right click on the orientation is decided by your view so if I would like to sculpt I don't know roughly perpendicular to this tree then I would click right here and then I would start drawing let's change the stroke to something like this and this is really fantastic there we go Just the the sky is the limit. You can you can try anything. Let's say I want to I want to draw um, I don't know little little spikes from here. I can just change the radius to something smaller and see how this looks no I don't like that stroke we go. well the only thing with this tool is that it's very resolution dependent so if you want good results with this tool it's probably necessary to use a pretty high resolution yeah the results are getting smoother right here and then you can just it, there's there's nothing you you can do it's very nice you can also use it to create geometry out of thin air so let's increase the radius a little bit you have created geometry just by using an alpha let's use this I mean seriously how cool is that just going to increase the radius a little bit and perhaps the alpha needs to be a little more high resolution as well that would probably help a high resolution alpha but nevertheless it holds in everything okay so what else do we have we have scrape uh, scrape is really nice it's a bit like a, a, a variant on the flatten but the difference is that scrape really removes so if I would at the stroke here I just switched to extrude 
I just switch to extrude to give an example of what it does. Scrape. As you can see, it doesn't just flatten, but it really removes. Well, uh, usually flatten averages between the highest and the lowest point under your brush. Flatten really, or scrape really removes. So if I would continue this, I could even blend it back in. And this is really great when you are starting out with rough angular shapes. You just take scrape and you peel away the sharp corners and then you use smooth and you get this it's one of my favorite tools fox pinch uh, well the voxel uh, I think that's obvious it's just because it's a it's a voxel tool but, uh, as far as I'm concerned that could be removed as you can see it pinches um, it's a bit hit and miss for me though uh, here it works quite well because this is already quite sharp but on something like this it will take a while before it pinches it's not as immediate as uh, the pinch tools in ZBrush and Mudbox I'm not exactly certain why but uh, I hope that will be improved in the future as well Fox Follow is another really nice brush uh, what it does is it just drags the surface along but the nice thing is because these are voxels you can't really break this you know you will sometimes see a little bit of artifacting when you get sharp ridges that are so sharp that the voxel resolution can support them but that's not a problem you just use the smooth brush and you can get really beautiful shapes this way it's it's very fun I know uh, distort and move tools have been available in other sculpting packages but I really recommend you to just play around with this because it's a lot of fun and it's definitely something new compared to what you're used to as a last thing uh, before we move over to the surface tools uh, I want to show an option in here which is called accurate smoothing this is something that will really help you uh, well you can always lower smoothing um, it's still quite harsh especially when you have uh, finer details which I don't seem to be having right now but I could add some fine details um, oh, I'm sorry I already turned it on uh, normally that's off that's off by default and if you use smooth then uh, you can see it's, it's quite aggressive and even when you lower your smooth it, it still it blends very harsh now it's probably pretty obvious but accurate smoothing is much nicer as you can see I can smooth with control now 